you go on the internet, you'll find a very beautiful and interesting image concerning the birth of the universe or the big bang of the universe or the expansion of the universe. The image somewhat looks like this where I've done a, an assimilation where it shows some of the key events of the history of the universe from its conception and it does it in concise form where you can see where it starts off by showing you that quantum fluctuations giving birth to the universe and then there's a period right here of inflation and then the next period will be your first light which we'll talk about not too far from now and then from light stars are formed as you can see here onto bigger stars as suns planets and living in galaxies all right and this covers a period of 13.7 billion years here you can see there's a slight upline here which are going on both ends and this represents the actual acceleration of the universe by the pushing of space by dark energy all right so you can find this image it's a very common image on the internet the original image was done actually by nasa and the w map team yet interestingly it's actually misleading in other words these images give you the misleading representation that the universe started out from a single location and then grew from that location. This is not correct. Imagine you was in the kitchen baking and you're baking a perfectly round raisin cake. And before you put the dough in the oven, you actually put raisins in the dough equally apart. And then you were able to watch it, it expand in the oven what would happen now is that the actual raisin cake would come out perfectly round and each raisin would be perfectly spaced apart so what you have here with this image on the board here you can see these raisins or these dots represent that the actual perfectly round raisin cake has equal spacing between each raisin and that represents the reality that space grew in all locations not at any one point all locations grew at the same time how you can also know this is fact as if we took this ball to represent the unmanageable hot highly compressed state of high density before the universe began that gave birth to the universe or this represents that xx that became the universe as this ball now what happens if the shape of this object this ball grows to this size and this ball what happens when the growth moves from this smaller size to this larger size which point of the original ball or object grew to this size to the larger ball and object all of them grew at the same time so what we're saying now is that when you look on the image of the growth of actual space as represented by this ball growing to this size, you will see that all points of space grew at the same time. And this is wholly proven to you again when you consider that if you were to look as far as you can go with the most magnificent or far-reaching telescope and used to look as far left or as far right 
or as far up or as far down, or as far east or as far west or as far north or as far south. The distance you would look at would all be the same no matter what distance or location you are looking from. If you are looking left, you can only go so far left. And it would all look the same as right, as up and down. In other words, no matter how far you look east, it will be equal to how far you look west. It will be equal to how far you look up and be equal to how far you look down. And this proves to you that all points of space grew equally and not that one point or one location as represented by these images that many scientists use in their lectures that gives you the impression that the universe grew from a single point. If this was not the case, you'd be able to look in one particular direction further than the rest. But that is not the case. You can't look further east than west or further south than north. All of these directions will look the same no matter which direction you're looking at, north, east, west or south. We talked about the XX that collapsed and became our universe. We called it an XX for a reason. The reason why it's called an XX or why I've labeled it XX is because this image is also misleading for a second reason. Because it says quantum fluctuations on the board here or on those images, like I said, you can find on the internet and it's giving birth to the universe. But if you don't know what caused the Big Bang or the Big Expansion, then you do not know if quantum fluctuations gave birth to the universe. So the term quantum fluctuations is misleading. Quantum fluctuations did not give birth to the universe. And on the mind199.com website, I have a video entitled A Universe From Nothing, where it explicitly explains this and the reality and gives you some fresh new ideas to think about how the universe came into fruition. Interestingly, the universe is considered to be magnanimous in its extent, as they say, its size. But where did it come from? Because scientists no longer say it was a Big Bang. They say it was an expansion. But an expansion by who? Or an expansion by who? Or should I say, what? Because that is something that academia or your learned scientists spend a great deal of time wondering how the universe came into fruition. What made it come into existence? What caused the big expansion? Because they no longer say it was a bang or explosion. Stephen Hawking, who is now deceased, he put forth some data or theory that the universe could have come from nothing. After he declared this, a lot of scientists, even to this day, followed suit. And what is strange, considering that science means the investigation into the universe by what nature presents for you to find out the facts of how nature works. That's the essence of what science means. So it's very strange that scientists will then take the word nothing and then attribute different degrees of nothing which are actually something. Now, if that sounds confusing and ridiculous, it is. Because that is confusion and ridiculous because nothing means just that, nothing. But yet, what you have here is that scientists have created degrees of nothing, which are still something. Example, you have a term called the vacuum. 
the vacuum of space, which represents where there is no actual particles in space. But yet, they're calling that nothing. But yet, at the same time, they know that electromagnetic fields still exist in the vacuum. There's no particles, but fields, electromagnetic fields still exist. So it is not nothing. It's still something. Another degree of so-called nothing is when you roll back the universe, as scientists have done mathematically through their data, shrink it to a smaller size and keep shrinking the universe. Shrink, 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 compress, compress, shrink, until you get back to the calculation of zero. And then say, the universe could have come from zero. And call that nothing. But yet, if the universe has shrunk back to zero, and the universe came back, or came into existence from this zero, and we exist today, and the universe exists, then, obviously, the zero was something. So it wasn't zero in essence, was it? You can make the declaration and statement and say, yeah, the universe is shrunk back to zero, and that's nothing, but how could nothing produce the universe? That wouldn't make logical sense. And it doesn't make any sense. So, no. Nothing cannot give birth to something. And that is why I recommend the video, A Universe from Nothing, on the mind199.com website. Scientists state that the universe we live in today, when you look in all directions, it is smooth. And what they mean by that is that if you look left, right, up or down, to any extent, to your furthest regions, left, right, up or down, it all looks the same. It all looks uniform. And one of the reasons why they know this to be as fact is because we put a term here on the ball called the first light. This first light today is known as the CMBR, meaning the cosmic microwave background radiation. This is your most abundant entity in the universe. And earlier when I said or mentioned about looking as far as you can go in any direction, this is what you will see with the correct telescope because these microwaves are invisible to the human eye. But with the right telescope, they are everywhere. It is the most abundant thing or entity in the universe. And they're uniform or evenly distributed no matter where you look. And this is perplexing, and this was very perplexing to scientists because they're summarizing or analyzing, say, if we came out of a spontaneous, as they would say, Big Bang, or an impulsive event, or a random birth of the universe, then how can the energy that was born from it be distributed evenly throughout the universe. This wouldn't make no sense. That would be impossible. How can this be so? Where everywhere is even if we came out of a wobbly or random or spontaneous event. Scientists claim to have solved this riddle. And how they claim to have solved this riddle is by an idea that they call Inflation. Inflation solves this riddle of why the universe is uniform or even in all directions with these microwaves. Because an impulsive or random or an event that just suddenly happened would spit out this energy or these photons or these particles 
randomly anywhere. But that's not the case. Why are they evenly distributed? They say inflation solves this because what they're saying is that in the early universe, because it was so, 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 so small, the particles had time to permeate around the small universe so that when inflation kicked in, it then stretched or inflated the universe to a far magnanimous size than it was. And that is why, because of the inflation of the universe, these particles are now everywhere because originally they were in closer proximity because they're in a closer universe and had time to move and distribute themselves around that very small, tiny, tiny, tiny universe. That's how they say they solved the problem. The inflation theory, it's called. But interestingly, you have to look on some figures pertaining to this because they say this inflation could have happened and if it did happen it happened far faster than the 300 million meters per second of the speed of light because inflation was an exponential event if it happened that went at a speed of one thousand million trillion trillion that's far 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 faster than the speed of light but equally what is also mind-blowing is when you check out the size of the universe is theoretically claimed to have been blown up by Meaning that they're saying that the universe from that original size was blown up by 10 to the power of 30. Before we get there, we go back to the balls, to the objects, and this ball or object is five times smaller than this ball or object. That's a 500% difference. That's five times the size. This is larger than that. Now, the reason why we're saying that is because if we went 10 times, you can imagine that. 20 times, you can imagine that. Some people being very good in geometry and mathematics could even go to 100 times, right? Now, what happens when you consider inflation, that it doubled the universe by over a hundred times. And in doing so, it blew up the universe by one million trillion trillion. That is a million million million, million, million times. This is five times, not a million, 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 million times, or one million, trillion, trillion. And that's just one type of inflation, because there's hundreds. If you go on Wikipedia, you will see this figure, 10 to the power 78. That's more than double this figure I've just given you. 10 to the power of 78 is saying inflation grew up the universe by 1 million trillion, 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 trillion. They're saying that's what happened. But in reality, there's actually no proof inflation ever existed or exists. Inflation is like that 
last puzzle in a jigsaw that you put in. Then you stand back and look at the puzzle. It looks correct until you examine the puzzle more closely. Because there is no facts that this exponential energy field exists, did. It sounds good, but it's not real. So, the reality of all this is this. The distribution, the even distribution of the cosmic microwave background radiation is still a mystery. The scientists also state, because of this reality, that the early universe was so smooth, so even. They also state that the universe was of high uniformity and of low entropy. And what they mean by that is that the universe was in a random state. There was no mess. So this informs you that the source of the universe was well organized before the birth of the universe. This source was well organized and it itself came from a chaotic state. In comes Dr. Malachi with the holy tablets. Because Dr. Malachi states in his writings, he states that primeval chaos existed before the Big Bang when the circle was dismantled and broken up and forced into the square and the subsequent energy gave birth to the universe. This you can read in the Holy Tablets, this book, in chapter 1. Tablet 2, verse 11 to 12. I know there is plagiarized information in this book. Like in chapter 2, tablet 4, verse 25 to 32, page 199, which talks about the creation of humans according to the Sumerians and their culture in their cuneiform tablets. That was taken from a Zachariah Sitchin book. I'm not talking about that plagiarization today. You can go and read about it in the Malachi Ziyok chapter in my book, in chapter 3, on page 73, in my book entitled Quantum and the Creation of the Universe and Humans. Go and read it. So, when the universe was born, Space was born. And that would be surprising and even shocking to some people. Yes, when the universe was born, space was born. Also, dark energy. Also, dark matter. And a little after that, you had radiation. And common matter and the fundamental forces. These are our common entities that we know of today that created the universe or formed the universe or developed the universe or built the universe. When you look at something like dark energy, like we mentioned earlier, dark energy can be likened to human growth hormone, which grows the human being. Because dark energy grew the universe. And as is the case today, it is actually making the universe larger by pushing the material or entity called space, where there is more space than ever now, because dark energy is an entity or or component that is pushing space and developing more and more space in the universe. So you can liken it to human growth hormone. That is 
a pattern of behavior by dark energy. Likewise, if we take one of the fundamental forces, and most people are familiar with the term gravity, when matter touches space, matter bends or warps space, and then space moves matter, and then we call this orbits. And this orbit is what we're calling the orbits of moons, planets, suns, even galaxies. And with gravity, gravity was the mason or is the mason that cements more and more pieces of matter together to construct the physical objects in our universe called moon, planet, suns and galaxies. It helped build the structures that we live in today, that we're calling our home called Earth, that we're calling our home called the galaxy, that we're calling our home called the universe. This is a pattern or patterns of behavior. This is law. Now, when we look at this and we can go through all of these entities and show that they are patterns of behavior, they could not have developed that behavior on the job. They have to have been pre-programmed to develop that pattern of behavior to deliberately construct the universe immediately upon its birth. But pre-programmed by who? Question mark. Or pre-programmed by who? Who is responsible for this programming? Who is responsible for the orderly behavior of these entities that immediately went to work in building our universe? So who ordered the pre-Big Bang ingredients to give birth to the Big Bang ingredients that were responsible for the orderly pattern of events and the law and order that took place right after the Big Bang orderly birth of the universe. In comes Dr. Malachi Z. York with the sacred records of Atom Ray, where he states that Sia is the entity responsible for shape, pattern, and form, who is congruent with who he and Hika who dwell outside of this time zone because in order for the universe to immediately have a pattern of orderly events and the building of the universe through law and order by the entities of space, dark energy, dark matter, common matter, radiation and the fundamental forces, they had to have received this intelligence from pre-existing material that passed on that intelligence for them to have that nature and behavior of building. This came from pre-existing material, from ether entities of shape, pattern and form that passed on this intelligence to the entities that we know of in the form of space, time, dark matter, dark energy, common matter, the fundamental forces and radiation. What does this all mean? This all means that the Big Bang, or the Big Expansion, or the birth of the universe was a reaction. A reaction from what? A reaction from the change in status, or reaction from the change in state, from that highly compressed, hot, highly hot density state that changed. And the effect was the unfolding being called space, time, Dark matter, dark energy, the fundamental forces, common matter, and radiation. 
All this means is that the teachings of Dr. Malachi Z. York talks about the birth of the universe and the Big Bang and equally mentions or talks about what took place or existed before the Big Bang. I give a mention to his most profound, non-plagiarized, son scientific teachings in my book, in parts of my book. And my book will give you a holistic or a great walkthrough on the birth of the universe. That's why it's called Quantum and the Creation of the Universe and Humans, where I also give you profound information in chapter four that will very much appeal to you atheists and you evolutionists and also to the open-minded religion, religious person or creationist, you will love chapter four because it gives you some magnificent and new information about the appearance of Homo sapien or the manifestation of Homo sapien sapien or the birth or the creation or the evolution of human beings. I also give mention to the creation of Jesus. I didn't say birth and I said that for a reason. I said the creation of Jesus. That's given a mention. And I give a mention to the most renowned civilization historically and factually that exists today, the ancient Egyptians, where my book will present some startling new information about this civilization, namely on the Nita Tehuti, who is most commonly called Foth. All this you will get in my book. So be you scientific, be you, be you spiritual, be you cultural, be you curious. My book has something for everyone. So you can get my book on Amazon.com and mine199.com.